Fnatic lost the EMEA championship to a bunch of weird Cypher setups. We got to see insane traps, out of this world reads, and Cypher playing on top of Generator? Huh? How did Fnatic, the best team in the world, lose to a bottom frag Sentinel? Well, say hello to Nat. He's the best Cypher player ever, and today, we're breaking down why his setups carried his team to a win over the reigning world champions. But before we get into the breakdown, I want to show you this cool website where you can basically get free skins. I'm also going to give away some gift cards in the next minute, so pay attention. On freecash.com, there's a bunch of ways to earn free Valorant points. What you do is you complete surveys, download apps, and just complete super simple tasks that you can do while riding the bus or sitting through commercials. I mean, look at how much free money you're missing out on. Like here, install and register on this app for some free points. Or reach a high level and receive 52,000 points. 50 bucks. Or you can register for Panera's membership program and get three bucks. I mean, you like sandwiches, don't you? I've already made $25. And here's how much other people are making. It's insane. And cashing out is pretty easy. Pick what you want, select the amount, and boom. All you have to do is go redeem your gift card. Or you can redeem any of these gift cards. You're welcome. So go to freecash.com and sign up for free using my link in the description or use code TEATS for a gift box that can win you up to $250. Now let's get back to the breakdown. I'll be straight up with you guys, uh, being a Sentinel main sucks. I hate those games where it just feels like no matter what you do, attackers never hit your site. Then you swap sites, and they finally go to the site that you just swapped from. And just, it's, it's tough. And that's how this game started. Nats was able to do some chip damage on pistol round, but past that, Fnatic kept dodging his site, and Nats kept getting put into pretty rough retake situations. But hey, just because you're not seeing any action, you need to be ready to show up for your team. Your time to shine could come at any point in the round, so you just need to stay ready. And Team Liquid have a lot of faith in their Cypher setups. So much so that Redgar even opts for a Judge and no armor so that Nats could have his setup at full strength. His ability to anchor and lock down a site is a major win condition. So this round, Liquid are in a 2-1-2 setup. Nats has a nasty setup on B, Safe is in mid with his operator, and their Judge is on A. They have win condition set up in every lane, making for a powerful spread. Now Fnatic are positioned in a standard mid default, but they aren't fully committing to mid control. They just want to apply some pressure mid, then work the wings, and finally hit a site through one of them. The attackers start the round with a mid smoke that isolates arches from the rest, and a KO knife lineup that hits so much ground. Market, Pizza, and Arches are all cleared out, and Safe doesn't feel comfortable with his dash disabled, so he backs up and has to give up the space. Then Fnatic head back into part 2 of their plan, work the wings. They split up, KO and Jet flashed and take A main, while Sova and Killjoy have comboed a recon and turret to take B main. With all this defaulting, Fnatic have pushed the defense back, and now they're free to hit whichever site that they want. But during all this defaulting, Yampy droned out mid for Safe. He pushed up with all this new information, and he's like, Hmm, they didn't take mid, they must be getting ready to hit a site. So you see him back off and head back to A to form a 3 stack. With Cypher's trapwire holding mid, there's no need for him to be here anymore. This is why it's important that you default to break the sentinel utility and avoid running into stacks like this. Regardless, Fnatic sprint through spawn and group up to finally start their B hit. But what they don't know is that they're running right into one of Team Liquid's win conditions, Nats' setup. We see a KO knife for close, Silver Dart on the tree, and an Omen Paranoia. But Nats is ready. From his spy cam, he pops his cage. This is his safety shield. This cage is placed on top of this roof so that if Nats chooses to play in it, it'll block out the Silver Recon and buy him time to become unblinded. All of Fnatic's utility was for nothing, and Nats is ready to punish. Yep, he's not going to be able to get there in time either. Nats has got to keep himself safe. No. Paranoia did find. Spray uh, takes him down a half. It's not everything he wanted. He's got to dip away from this now. He's got Chronicle to try and handle. He can't do Well, I guess there's one more piece of utility I forgot to mention. Killjoy's Nano Swarm. She has a lineup that clears out all of stairs, dealing a ton of damage to Nats, forcing him out of position, and only allowing him to do some chip damage, I guess. Their side anchor going down is such a huge blow for Team Liquid. Yampy tried to flood in with this smoke that his omen threw for him, but he gets taken down by Chronicle Shock Dart. This forces Team Liquid to save and go down 1-4. to four. Man, uh, maybe these setups aren't as great as I thought. After a crushing loss last round, Team Liquid are in a very adaptive setup this round. They're still formed in a 2-3, but Cypher's trap wires are on A, and his spy cam spots mid. This is because Fnatic have their KO null command online. If Cypher gets hit by KO's ult, his entire kit is ruined. So this is a great adaptation. And speaking of Fnatic, they're going to apply mid pressure again, but are taking the space to go into a B split. The attackers open the round with a silver recon that clears out arches and a smoke to cut off the safe space. And Durka is taking it. He literally sprints up mid and uses his own cloud 
Bellburst to buy himself just enough time to cross across safe in his op. Chronicle flings his knife, and this clears out the entirety of mid for Durka, but he's lagging far behind. The Cloudburst is fading, and he's about to get caught in the open of this jet op. But they've already gone past the second one. Oh dear! Safe just barely misses his head, and he accidentally dashes forward. K.O. tries to get the punish, but he can't catch this slithery snake. Oh, and Durka? He's gone. Him and Killjoy and Sova are pushing up and are ready to split B. System looking a little weaker than before. Yampy towards the back of the site. Nats towards CT. Durka looking to make that cross. Has a little look towards CT. Chronicle rips his ult, but Nats pops his cage just in time to scramble this execute. Nats' setup ends up securing the first blood for Team Liquid. This cage, when activated, allows defenders to either get out of sight if it gets too hot in there, or flood in to help the side anchor. Now, pushing through this can be really risky as an attacker, but Durka couldn't resist what was going on inside. But he swung right into Nats, and he sat him down. Then Yampy, whose back sight, swings off the attention that Nats has made near spawn, and gets his. His job is done. Yampy now has to stay alive as long as possible so that his teammates can come over and help. And that's what you see. All of Liquid are sprinting through spawn, and if you look closely, Nats throws out another cage to cover the stairs to sight cross. But are Team Liquid too late? He loses his life. This time, Nats on the adjustment gonna do well here. It's only a Guardian for Yampy, but he makes it look... Sharp as ever, but one player slipped closer. Already down towards the side is Boaster, holding them back in a punish Nats trying to play a little closer. The trade comes in. It's scrappy as hell, but Leo's still standing. As is Alpha, he's got too many problems. This was perfectly played by the defense. If you look closely, you'll see that each player is playing off each other perfectly. When one person takes contact or gets into a fight, the other will swing for the trade. Cypher swung through with his retake cage, and Omen gets the trade. Then Omen goes down, but now it's KO's turn to get the trade. They were all in unison. But remember, it was all started by this aggressive flood led by Cypher. Now, this isn't over yet, we've seen players clutch up 2v1s, especially Alphire. Just Alpha in the 1v2, they should have noted both players here. What can the young wonder do here? Nothing! Solkas handles it! With Nats' heroics last round, we're brought to round 7, where we see arguably the coolest Cypher play I've maybe seen ever. Team Liquid have also swapped their setup and have Sova pushing Jet up B main with his drone, K.O. is going to play off this mid trip, and these two are locking down A site. But Teets, what's so special about this setup? Oh, you just wait and see. As a matter of fact, Fnatic are headed straight for it. They have four players lined up near Catwalk who are going to apply pressure on mid before heading into A while Killjoy lurks and holds B. They start this round with that Archer Smoke they've been defaulting. And then Chronicle throws his knife lineup where if it tags anyone, he's throwing this Molly lineup that goes out of the map but lands in Wine. But there's no tag, so he puts it away. Now Fnatic is like, all right, no one's in A main, let's go hit this site. And we see the legendary top generator Cypher setup. What could Nats possibly be doing up there? It's a valley once again with his utility. <laughs> let's find out, because he's about to come face to face oh, with Durka, just face checking him on this one. Waiting for that dive on in. Yampy pins down, Boaster. This is what you want to- Nats absolutely creamed these guys. Now, what would possess a Cypher to play on top of generator? One word for you, anti-stratting. I did a bit of research because there's no way that Nats just naturally knows that Durka loves to path this way when entering onto A site. He has to have some insider information. And as a matter of fact, if you look at the last Ascent match Fnatic played against Koi and look at both the times Durka dashed into A site, do you know where he went? Yup. Top Jenny. The setup gets even better. His cages are also high enough so that Sova's recon won't tag him and gives him enough space to rat around in. His omen also smokes for him so that he can stay up there safely. Without Jet, no one else can really punish him for being there. And then, his neural theft combined with his spy cam helps his Sova know where to blast his hunter's fury. Fnatic got absolutely destroyed by this cypher setup. Uh, literally, they had zero chance. The remaining attackers tried their best to make a play without their controller or entry, but it's hard to piece this one back together. Now they've got to be so aware of him. And it was a little bit late on the swing around. Redguard does find him in the end. Now, last time I checked, Cypher shouldn't be playing on top of Jenny. So to win your team around with a setup like that, Nats is feeling himself now. And we get to see another cool setup. Team Liquid are set up in a 3-2. Jet and Sova are going to contest B main, KO is the first rotator, and these two have a sick trap setup. What's going to happen is that as soon as Cypher's camera takes contact in tree, Omen is sending out his paranoia, they're both swinging, and are going to farm. But are Fnatic going to set off this trap? Maybe. They're starting out pretty passively, but eventually, Jet, KO, and Omen are going to walk up 
up Catwalk, and these two are going to contest B main. Fnatic start the round similar to as before. They start with a few jump spots, but then smoke for arches, throw their god KO knife lineup that clears everything, and use a Silver Recon to trade out against Liquid's knife. This is all solid map-wide pressure, and you see Fnatic slowly start their walk up mid. They're inching closer and closer to this Catwalk trap, and if they get caught in 4k, Nats and Redgar are going to farm. I'll say that, it's gonna go terribly wrong, obviously. <sighs> and at the last moment, Fnatic turned to go into mid. Not gonna lie, I really wanted to see that trap in action, but that's okay. We're going to see their protocol for when this trap doesn't go off. So because mid is so free, Fnatic are planning on going for a B split. You see Sova drone through B main, and Kildred plants her turret to take the space, and Omen even paranoias for them through mid. This forces Liquid to fall back. The three Fnatic players in mid snap the trip, and this is Liquid's reaction. Because their jet got forced off B main, and their mid trip got snipped, these two give up the trap, push through Catwalk, and shoot Boaster in the back. He was hanging out in this area to try and hold his map control for his team, but now that he's down, Fnatic can't hold on to Market and have to push into sight. This was perfect decision making from Nats and Redgar. Now because Fnatic lost so much space and are down a player, Durka feels like he needs to go big with his Bladestorm. He updrafts over the spawn smoke, but Safe has knives of his own. This fight is big. Coming in, and Nats has punished Boaster, so okay, opening up that chance of that retake through middle perfectly. And by now the plant's certainly not gone down and- Man. What a shot. Safe was so ready for this peak. It's now a 5 versus 3, and Alphair also tries to make a play back in market. Once again, Liquid are ready for it. There's only two Fnatic players left, and this one's hard to come back from. 2v5 now for Chronicle and Leo. What can they get done here? I'm scared when it's these two, though. I'm desperately scared. However, Chronicle falling leaves Leo in the impossible scenario. Falling in the end. Liquid back in control. 5 standing. Fnatic takes a timeout to stop the bleeding. Dude, he was in my smoke. He was on top of generator. I swear, I saw him. What's a cypher doing up there? Durka, Durka, it's okay. Just entry normally. He can't hurt you if you just dash out into the open. Oh, okay. If you say so. Fnatic are keeping it simple this round. They got everyone grouped up outside of A main, and that's where they're ending. And Team Liquid are in a similar setup to last. Both initiators are on B again to gather constant information. Jed is contesting men on Catwalk, and Omen and Cypher have the same trap online as last round. Only thing though is that they're not going to use it this round with Fnatic running it up A. Or can they? In the entranceway into sight, Nats has a trap wire reaching across the entire choke point. So what, Teats? It's just a wire for sight to let them know they're in sight. Big whoop. No, 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 hear me out. The last time Fnatic went A, Cypher was on top of Generator and completely embarrassed Urka for following his normal entry path. And since he got punished so hard, odds are that he's going to dash in normally. This trap wire has a lot of potential to take down Fnatic's entry. And even if it does get shot or broken, this still gives Team Liquid a solid idea of when they need to spam through smoke. So let's see how it works. Chronicle opens up the round with a shock dart lineup to break a mid trip, but it misses. Durka peaks top mid, but Fnatic aren't headed this way. Their plan to take a main is to have Sova's drone take contact first, Boaster is going to teleport across, and he's going to double swing with his jet. So it's kind of like a triple peak. But a main is empty, so you see Fnatic scale up, and you see the utility starting to fly in. Flashes, mollies, and their execute starts. Let's see if that's gonna do what's needed. TP towards the back of the side. It has! It's gorgeous! That's Nats doing serious work here. They can't do much to stop the second layer, but Booster! Punished as well! Nats coming alive in this! It's only critical to try and deny him! And that's another hit that was completely ruined by a Cypher trap wire. Nats does a phenomenal job of constantly swapping up his trap wires that it's impossible to predict where they're going to be next. He also predicted that Durka would change his pathing, and he punished him. But but Boser tried to entry too. He smoked Heaven in such a way that it allowed him to ult on the other side and be completely safe while blocking out anyone under Heaven. At least so we thought. Because from the complete opposite side of the map, Sova launched a recon to land right in the middle of sight. Boaster gets spammed, KO gets spammed at 50 HP, and Fnatic flooded out on the site for a quick retake. This leaves Leo in a 3 versus 1, and Team Liquid are playing off this Cypher utility really freaking well. But Liquid just flooding the site, taking it away from any control Fnatic wanted. And they can't get away from that. 
I just want to say, notice how often Fnatic are able to buy. They just lost four rounds in a row and can still afford solid loadouts. This is why teams are constantly only buying half shields. You basically never have to save. But if they do lose this one, they won't have that luxury next round. This round's important. Fnatic's game plan is, once again, pretty simple. Let's go A. Only this time, they're going to have Killjoy Lurk to try and punish Team Liquid for their quick retakes. This is pretty smart, because as they're retaking, she can sneak up behind and shoot them in the back. And Team Liquid are in the same setup. I mean, hey, they didn't see the mid-op or the tree trap yet, so why change it? Team Liquid start the round with a knife for B main, it tags nothing, and Sova recon shortly after in case anyone was just waiting out the knife. This is a great mix-up since they have a solid setup on the other half of the map that they want Fnatic to run into, and the attackers swap up the way they're taking a main just so it doesn't look the same as last round. Durka smokes the cross, which cancels out the one way, and this allows his team to scale out of the entrance way. Once it fades, they can fight anyone contesting this area. But once again, no one's here. So now Safe wants to get more information for his team, so he pushes up to peek into tiles, he spots the lurk, but barely misses. This triggers Fnatic to go right into their execute. But are they going to get punished by the same Cypher utility again? The operators here, but still, does the trap work again? Yes, it does! Nats teed up for a second round of this, and this is going to be fury from Durka, but Nats now going to reveal, and that's the spike going down. No access to sight. That's what Nats stands for. Despite getting tagged by the same trap wire last round, Fnatic get punished again. So if you're ever playing against a Cypher in your rank games, it is so important that you clear out your duelist's path. You could use shocks or drones, ray satchels, or just by pre-firing common trip spots, you can save your team rounds. And because of this kill and his new ult range buff, Nats was able to use Durka's body to use his neural theft, and Liquid get another kill off it. I mean, they haven't seen a single person this round, and Team Liquid have already won. All of them are also here, and they decide to flood out again and clean up the site. Nats waits for his teammates to get into position, he pops his Cage, they flash out, and the retake starts. They hear someone tap the cage, so Soulcast snaps to A main, gets one, Nats takes down the Jenny player, and once again, we're in a lopsided player advantage. And then finally, Alphair gets spammed through the smoke. He had zero chance. So after five round losses, Fnatic were finally pushed onto an eco, and Liquid cleaned them up nicely. This brings us to the last round of the half. And if you're a Liquid fan, you gotta be pretty happy about how this turned out. At one point, they were down 1-4, and this comeback has been led behind Nats and his constant swapping of utility placement. And despite being their bottom fragger, he's carried Liquid back into this game. And they're finally switching up their setup. Nats has another trap set up on B with his Sova. What's gonna happen is that Sova is still gonna show his normal utility to make it, you know, look normal but Cypher's spy cam is placed so that it looks directly into B main. This works pretty similarly to Killjoy's turret that she loves to put here. But with this camera, your Sova can stare at his minimap and know exactly where to spam. Nats is also playing in logs so that he won't get tagged by any arrows, knives, and odds are that Fnatic won't use a molly to clear out this one spot, and if they do, he's got a cage that he can activate at the press of a button and get out. I told you, this is a strong setup, but are Fnatic going to run into this one? Fnatic start by smoking mid, KO lops his mid knife again, and Safe wants to contest this default, so he peeks out from Catwalk, and he's finally going to get this kill. When is this going to change, Fnatic? They need to get a grip on this, because this is very uncharacteristic of them. And last round, I actually quite like the adjustment, but did they get Nats on the knife then? Dude, there's no way. He unscopes at the worst time possible and has to dash away. Fnatic then use this to start their fight for B main. Leo launches his dart to clear out the space, and Alphire places a turret to cap this off. But Yampy doesn't want to just give up the space for free. He uses his drone to try and get a tag for his Odin. It tags Killjoy, and Nats tags the turret with his spy cam. Killjoy has to back off, and Yampy is able to destroy this turret with his Odin. Just like that, Team Liquid have won the battle for B main. But Fnatic turned their attention to A main. It's been free for the past few rounds, but the defense are contesting it this time. Fnatic simply wait for the one way to fade, and Boaster jiggle peeks from on top of this wall. He spots Redgar and Wine, but he isn't leaving. The battle for A main begins. Redgar smokes deep into A main, and he trades paranoias with Fnatic, but him and Soulcast kinda overcommit. Redgar gets cleared out by Amali, and Fnatic obliterates Soulcast with their Hunter's Fury. The site is open, and Fnatic file in. Safe rotates through spawn with his op, he peeks from heaven, and just barely misses Durka. And now that the op is here, Boaster throws out a smoke to scramble Safe's aim, and they drone behind it to make sure he can't find a kill. But this doesn't stop Safe. 
he keeps going for peaks, and he knows that he needs to find one if Team Liquid want a chance into this round. So Durka heads over to the jump up box to punish these peaks and holds his cloud bursts. But somehow he kills Nats? Okay, that's a bit unlucky. This elimination makes it a 4 versus 2, but right before Nats died, he pops his cage. This cage is similar to the one we've seen them use on B. The defense can use it to leak out from multiple different spots. You can full swing through it, jump down to hell and be completely protected, or you can fly out to behind generator. This 100 credit ability creates so much chaos for the attackers, and Nats was able to get it off. So let's see how the two remaining liquid players use it. Is Doug the biggest Nats? How did you get Nats in that? I didn't know that. Okay, and now Slate's got a rifle instead. He's flying on down. He's got another, another 1v2. Yappy, he wants it. He gets in. 14 HP though. Dude, thank God they nerfed the shorty. These two used the cage, like I mentioned, and blasted Leo and Boaster with their 150 credit investments. But Yampy only has 14 HP. One shot to the body, and he's done. Seeing all that utility being put towards the site. One bullet. Okay, reload. The it's got to be conscious of the turret, yeah. yeah. Okay, it's gone. He's got time, and he, I'm pretty sure he knows the, corner, the side that Alpha's on. He needs to draw this out somehow. Tap on the spike and wait. Jump peak. Oh, oh, he tried well. to pre-aim for it. <laughs> Trying to toy with no. what? What? No way. What? No. Show me that POV. Way. Show me it right now. He punishes for the constant peaking and close out the half eight to four. And by the way, if you thought these setups were good, then you need to check out the ones that Fnatic runs on Bind. 